All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Welcome back to the studio. Keyword is going to be midsole because today we're talking about maximalist versus minimalist running shoes. That's a hard word to say, maximalist. And yes, no footage from the rec center today, although the aqua jogging session was exciting. I'll tell you about it. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. I want to dive right into the topic tonight because it is a big one, just like this Hoka, this Hoka Stinson 3, which is a ridiculously large midsole. Look at that thing. So, all right, where do we begin? Well, Let's just say that this topic is a little bit of a hot topic in the running world, the running shoe world, medical world, coaching world, different areas within running. It uh, it gets a little heated at times, I must say. Just in the online forums that I have seen and visited in the past, and even, frankly, sometimes comments down below these videos. And guess what? I'm excited for the question of the day. Wait for it. It'll come here in a minute. Uh, but anyway, People have different opinions on whether or not runners should run in maximalist shoes or minimalist shoes. That's what we're getting at tonight. And basically, the reason I'm bringing up this topic now is because I have an injury right now. A bone bruise slash, for all the new subscribers, just so you know, welcome. And just so you know, I have a bone bruise slash the beginning of a stress reaction in my second and third metatarsals in my left foot. So because of this injury, I'm mulling over right now, going through the process of discerning how can I stay healthy moving forward with training and with frankly big volume of training? I was in a marathon training block when this injury popped up and it is what it is. It happened. I have, I already shared in that vlog up right hand corner as to why I think uh, that this injury popped up when it did. But now I'm strategizing as best as possible on how I can stay healthy and frankly, hopefully help some folks out there that are struggling with injuries as well, help you out there strategize for how to avoid injuries in the future as well. Okay, diving in, first of all, a maximalist running shoe is a running shoe that has a tall stack height. So this, a stack height, just so you know, and this is a little tip of the day, when you go into a running shoe store the next time, Make sure you remember this term or this phrase, stack height. It refers to the stack height of the midsole. So this is the midsole right there, right where you can see my fingers. And it basically determines how much foam or whatever material is being used through the midsole, uh, how much foam, rubber, uh, a blend of the two, how much foam is through the midsole. And this Hocus Stinson 3 has a ridiculous midsole. It's a 37 millimeter, and yes, the, it is measured in millimeters. You should know that as well. A 37 millimeter stack height in the heel and a 33, 37, yeah, I think 33 stack height in the forefoot. So it's a huge stack height. Whereas this Reebok, Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro has a 16 millimeter in the heel and a 12 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. So when you're at the running shoe store, make sure you're grilling and drilling and asking questions to the shoe reps on the floor, making sure that they're really listening to you about stack heights and what stack heights do for your running gait and your running uh, and your foot strike. And on that note, here are six Basically six factors to consider when looking at a stack height, which determines where your running shoe falls in the maximalist versus minimalist uh, continuum, where it will lie in that, in that line. Okay, so here we go. Number one, what are your bio, biomechanics of your stride? So what does your gait cycle look like? Uh, what does your foot strike look like? Uh, for, uh, how does your foot strike the ground, AKA, what is your foot strike? Number three, what is the volume and intensity of your training? So that's number three, volume and intensity. Number four, what is your injury history? So that really impacts my decision-making. Number five, how much do you weigh? Like some runners are big and strong and weigh 250 pounds. Like that's a big runner. Some runners are a buck 10, okay? We all are built differently. Don't be shy or afraid to bring up your weight with a running shoe rep. I'm serious. Like if, yeah, don't be afraid because that will impact the type of shoe you might end up buying at a running shoe store. And number six, what is the predominant surface that you're running on? So is it dirt? Is it grass? Is it is it pavement? Is it cement? Yes, there's a difference. Is it a treadmill, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the six factors that I would mark down in your mind when you're going into a running shoe store and you're looking at the different stack heights 
in a running shoe. And I realize this is a trainer and this is a racer, just so you know. Okay, in the minimalist running shoe camp, you've got five finger shoes. You've got zero, spelled X-E-R-O. Um, and you've got Merrell, M-E-R-R-E-L, I believe. They are making some very minimalist running shoes these days. Actually, at one point, New Balance was making, I don't think they make it anymore, but a very streamlined trail shoe, very minimalist trail shoe. And then on the maximalist side, many of you know about Hoka. They're probably the most popular maximalist running, running shoe out there. Uh, New Balance is now getting in the fray with the New Balance Fresh Foam More shoe. And then I would say, I would say Nike, frankly, is in the, is in the camp. Where Here we go. Like the, the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit and the Zoomfly Flyknit, both of these shoes have a pretty tall stack height. Uh, over 30, 30 millimeters in both of these shoes through the heel. Now, before I give my full opinion on maximalist or minimalist running shoes, I want to make some observations. First of all, the East Africans. We all know the story of Abibi Bekele winning the 1960 gold medal at the Rome Olympics barefoot. He ran the marathon barefoot. That's amazing. Listen, if we could all run barefoot, we would never have to spend another dollar on running shoes for the rest of our life. But that's just not how the world works because we are raised in shoes in the modern world, right? But look at uh, Lelisa de Sisa of Ethiopia, who is part of the Breaking 2 project. He has won Boston twice and took second this year in 2019. And he, he didn't know, he, I think it was 14, 15 years old, somebody introduced him to running shoes. His entire life, he had spent barefoot running around Ethiopia as a kid. And then he would, he laughed. Like the first time somebody showed him running shoes and asked him if he wanted to try them, he just, he didn't know what to do. He laughed at the guys. And it's just fascinating to look at some of these athletes like Haile Gebrselassie and Lelisa de Sisa and I'm sure Kipchoge, I don't know his story actually, but I bet as a kid, he ran around barefoot most of the time. Now, listen, the temperatures there are more temperate, so it's a little easier to be outside more often in good temperatures, and so you're not as worried about cold temperatures for your feet. Well, I would be fascinated to just do a study, I guess, on some of these athletes who have basically been raised barefoot and now are training and I would be curious to see if they're walking around as well a lot of the time in shoes. In fact, I think a lot of them actually walk around in flip-flops. I've seen documentaries of East African runners, and I think a lot of them are walking around in flip-flops. So that's just my quick observation of the East African runners right now that are basically the best of the best in the world, and to see where they have come throughout their life. I don't know. It's just a fascinating evolution in footwear in East Africa. Okay, the other observation I'd like to make is Jim Walmsley. Yes, he is considered the elite ultra runner in the United States right now, and frankly, probably top, I would say top five in the world, most likely. I think people would put him in the top five. He is sponsored by Hoka, and Hoka was founded in 2009. So, that was 10 years ago, and you probably heard the buzz recently about the Hoka Carbon X running shoe, a new carbon fiber plate running shoe from Hoka designed for longer distance racing with a carbon fiber plate. Well, as far as I know, Jim Walmsley uh, runs a lot and I don't follow him on Strava. A lot of people do. I've heard he trains at least at 100 to 110 to 120 to 130 miles a week on a consistent basis. And as far as I know, I don't think he's been very injured over the past two to three years. I know he's had some issues. Um, I know he had a tough race at UTMB last year. I don't think that was connected directly to a, a, a big injury. I think it was more probably just being tired. Uh, but he runs for Hoka and he's stayed pretty healthy in Hoka definitely falls into the maximalist running shoe category. Okay, with all that said, I know, and I know I just covered a lot, with all that said, here is my full and final opinion, and I'm probably gonna ruffle some feathers by saying some of this, but here's my final opinion on the minimalist versus maximalist running shoe debate, discussion, and yes, feel free, well, okay, I'll get to the question of the day in one second, here we go. I would not run in minimalist running shoes on a consistent basis, meaning the five finger shoes, the zero shoes, the um, the Vibram shoes, I think that's, yeah, the Vibram shoes, but then also the Merrill, that's it, the Merrill shoes. I would just be very careful. Can you walk around in them? Absolutely. 
running consistently, I think you you really need to be careful with minimalist running shoes. But on the on the flip side, on the maximalist sh- side, Hoka is definitely the kingpin when it comes to high stack height running shoes. I did stay pretty healthy over the past four years in Hoka running shoes, pretty healthy. But I would advise don't get hooked on high, on tall stack heights. Now maybe your knees need it. Maybe your yeah, maybe your knees need it. I don't know what else. Your ankles, your hips. There are there are situations where high stack heights can really help a body feel better. But I will say high stack heights might be hiding some of the uh, some of the lurking injuries or the lurking weaknesses within your kinetic chain from basically your lower back all the way to your toes, you might be hiding. And I think, I think I might've been hiding some of my issues, especially with my left foot over the past four years by training too much in tall stack heights, especially Hoka running shoes. So what would I do to strengthen my kinetic chain? Walk around your house barefoot and even better yet, uh, your, your yard or a grass soccer field. Like, because it's a little uneven, just to stimulate those little muscles in your feet. And guess what? I need to do better at this. I'm going to do better at this, especially when I'm out of this boot. That is my promise to you. And then after walking around barefoot, I do think there can be a benefit to jogging very short distances barefoot, very short distances. This is why I'm a little against the whole barefoot um, minimalist movement. I think it's just asking for tr- we're not built because we are raised with running shoes especially in Europe and the United States we're not I don't know about you know some parts other parts of the world but a lot of us are raised in in shoes and so we just can't dive right into minimalist running shoes cold turkey you might be asking yourself wait a minute Seth you just said don't run in minimalist shoes but go run barefoot meaning let me just clarify don't you can run in minimalist shoes around a grass soccer field a little bit but don't go train full blown in minimalist running shoes. Um, so what I'm saying is you don't need to go out and buy minimalist running shoes because it's just like running barefoot essentially. So just go to a nice, I would even say a turf field. If you can find a nice, soft, even ground turf, gra- I have one in Boulder. I'm going to be going to it very soon for the, especially when this foot is feeling better and just jog vi- walk first and then jog very, very gently. So in conclusion, no minimalist running shoes as a daily trainer for me. Build strength by walking and gentle jogging barefoot. Don't rely on maximalist running shoes all the time because it might be hiding some weaknesses in your kinetic chain. I would strive for that 20 to 26, 28 millimeter stack height for the heel and the forefoot. Um, now, obviously we can do, you can, you can vary, you can, you're definitely going to vary. You can't find a running shoe every time that falls in that range, but that's what I'm shooting for. And lastly, I think it's okay to supplement your, your volume of training with higher cushion shoes. If you are striving to stay healthy and, and if you're in the process of building a stronger foot and ankle, especially. Does that make sense? Keyword, midsole, question of the day. Let me have it. You let us know. Give us your strong, unfiltered opinion on the maximalist versus minimalist running shoe debate. Let us know where you fall in the continuum. I don't know where I fall. You make the decision. That is it for today. I know that was a lot. That was a good topic. I enjoyed it. And yes, we will talk about the drop in running shoes very soon as well because that is very connected to the heel uh, stack height and the toe the toe box stack, the uh, the forefoot stack height as well. Seek beauty, work hard.